If you go back to the early days of the automobile, what you saw is that uh, we used to operate motor vehicles on paths that were designed for carts, horse and buggy, right? Think about driving your horse and buggy uh, to a destination. If you were driving along and you came up to a big tree or a big rock or a big gully, what would you do? You would just go around it, right? Not a big deal. No one would ever take the time to clear that obstacle out of the way, smooth out that roadway. You were, you were going four or five miles an hour in a wagon. Like, why did you need that? But when we went out in the early days of the automobile and we put high performance surfaces down, we threw gravel down, sometimes we put a little bit of asphalt, uh, what have you, down. And people would drive a high performance vehicle, and by high performance I mean something that would go 15, 20, 25 miles an hour. What happened was they would come up to these obstacles that were formerly not a problem and they would crash into them. They would run into them. If you look at that chart, remember that chart I showed you where it said the death per mile traveled? Back in the 1920s, 1930s, that was astronomical. The level of carnage on our early roadway systems is, is almost unfathomable. In fact, if we had the same death rate per mile traveled uh, today that we had in 1935, instead of 42,000 people dying in the United States last year, it would have been over half a million people dying in the U.S. last year. That, that difference is because of forgiving design. And what engineers did, and again, I think this is genius, I think it's brilliant, I think it's a deep insight, is they looked at the transportation network and they said, we can see that drivers, aka human beings, are going to make mistakes. And because they make mistakes, things are gonna happen. And we can, in our design, forgive those mistakes. We can accommodate them and, and design into our systems ways of making sure that those mistakes uh, are, don't, don't result in horrific crashes, don't result in trauma, don't result in death and injury. Let me show you exactly what I'm talking about, because this is actually very simple. Here's a two-lane road, traffic going in each direction. As an engineer, I, I look at this and I understand that drivers are going to make mistakes. Drivers are going to uh, look down and change the radio. They're going to be distracted by the baby crying in the back seat. They're going to have something that comes up. And because of that, when they're driving, they're going to swerve a little bit. They're going to float a little bit. If they're floating in their lane, we don't want them to go across the center line and hit an oncoming vehicle. And so what do we do? We forgive that mistake by giving them a, a little bit of room. We widen out the lanes. We give them a, a little bit more room to move. Now, we understand that uh, even when we give drivers a little bit of room to move, sometimes there will be an obstacle in the roadway. Sometimes they'll lose control completely. Sometimes they'll need to get over on the edge, wh what have you. Um, we don't want that movement uh, to result in them going off the roadway and having some type of trauma. And so what we do is we create like a recovery area on the side. We give them just a little bit of buffer room on the side. Now, we know and understand that even with a wider lane and even with a little bit of buffer room, Sometimes a driver in their vehicle is going to completely exit the roadway. They're going to be going at a high velocity. They're going to have a lot of built-in momentum. We want the kinetic energy of that vehicle to dissipate before they hit something that is not going to move. And so what we do is we clear out the obstacles on the edge of the roadway and give plenty of room for that car to, to in a sense, dissipate that energy. Now we have a forgiving design. We have forgiven the common mistakes that drivers make. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pause here again and point out for I think like the fourth time, this is a genius insight. And this has saved millions and millions of lives. This approach, which is pioneered here in North America, has been copied around the world and is the standard of design for highways. What is the problem with this approach? What's the problem with this mentality? Well, this works great on the open road where there's no humans outside of a vehicle, where there's nobody walking, where there's nobody biking. But once you bring this notion into the city, what happens? Once you bring this notion into the city, what we do is we signal to the driver that we got your back. We signal to the driver that we, we've built in all this compensation for mistakes that you might make. 
We've actually created lots of buffer room for you. We, we have designed and planned this for your high performance and comfort. And what happens is that drivers get the wrong signal and they drive faster. They respond to the added capacity we give them by speeding up. That is also a very human response. 